Hello, uh, today I'm going to be talking more about how we can uh, determine whether or not a model um, is doing a good job or, or not. Um, how can we interpret different scores and make sure that we aren't getting a good score just by chance. And so I'm going to be picking up last time um, with the model that's trying to predict um, COVID deaths two weeks out based on the current number of cases. And, um, and so let me just quickly review what I did last time. Um, we were doing a train test split on our data frame and our data frame looked like this right here and um, it was per county and then there's every day in the year there um, then i created this linear regression model which i imported from sklearn.linear linear, linear model and then i did two things with it I, I fit it to my training data and then i scored it on my um, on my testing data and these were the two pieces my training data and testing data came from here and so when i was doing this um, what i basically did is i put in my y values which is what I'm ultimately trying to predict and then here I put in my x values or my features um, which are things I know right now so for example right now I know the seven day rolling average um, of positive test cases and then two weeks out I'm trying to predict well how many deaths will there be um, this can be a sing single series which is why we just put a string um, in the brackets after the data frame um, here we actually have to pass in a full data frame because in general we might have multiple features and when I pass in a list um, to the brackets after a data frame, well, I get a smaller data frame. And that's why I have the double brackets there. So anyway, so I have this 0 0.2, and um, and we know that the score will somewhere be be somewhere between 0 and 1. So it's a little bit hard to say how good this score is, right? Maybe um, you always get something like 0 0.2 by chance. Do we know? Um, so that's one of the things I want to talk about today. And then the other thing that you might notice is if I rerun this a few times, oh, now I'm at 27%, 30, 32%, 24%, 24, 28, 26. So you can see that based on how I do this train test split, um, I can do very different numbers. And, and so that doesn't give us a lot of assurance. So how can we get some more stable numbers um, out of the system? Um, I'll just give you a, a kind of a, a hint of what the problem is. If I look at train df and I look at this um, column here, which is the thing we're trying to predict, um, let me do that. So I have all those numbers there. Let me look at the variance of that column. Variance is just kind of a measure of um, how different values are from the average. And then I'm also going to do that thing, same thing for the test. And so when I do that for the test, I see that actually they have quite different um, variances. And if I run this again, well, it's going to randomly shake out differently. Now the test data actually has a higher variance than, than the training data. And um, we're going to eventually look at how this scoring function works, but it turns out that it's very much based on this variance, uh, which is why we have such a noisy measure. So let me head over to the slides and try to give a preview of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to be learning four new, um, new functions related to model evaluation. So first, we're going to learn these two functions here, which will let us score our models. Um, second, if our model is kind of med mediocre like mine is, right? I mean, 0 0.2 is not great. How can we know if it's not just um, chance? And then we're going to be using something called the permutation uh, test score for that. And then finally, um, to get a less noisy measure, we're going to be doing something called cross-value um, um, uh, scoring. And so uh, let me start here with these two metrics here. I have this R2 score and mean absolute error, and we'll talk about how those work. So um, if I go back to my slides, or go back to my notebook right here, I'm doing this scoring here. Um, I can also up here, I can say um, from sklearn.metrics import, um, there's a couple things I wanna do. I wanna do the R2 score, and then the mean um, absolute error score. And so the way all of these metrics work is kind of like this. I'll, I'll call the metrics function, and then I'll say something like, um, let me actually just check this here quick. I'll say something like, um, I had to make sure the order um, is different between my true and my predicted. I'll say, um, you know, what are the true values, and then my predicted um, values. And, and so for example up here, I know that these are my true values, and then my predicted values, well, how do I figure out my predicted values? I can just say, well, model, please predict for me what these y values should be based on these x values that I'm going to give you. Right, so I'm going to do that. 
And so here I'm, I'm putting in x values, and it's trying to return back to me y values um, in this weird array thing that we'll eventually talk about. But I could take this and I could put this right here. And, um, and so then I could use lots of different metric functions here. Um, I could, for example, um, use the um, R2 score right here. And guess what? It turns out that this score here that's associated with the model is just defaulting to use our R2 score. There's lots of different uh, metrics I could have used instead, but this one is the default one. So let's talk a little bit about um, um, let's talk a little bit about um, how this score is computed. So the idea of it is that this is the thing I'm trying to predict, right? So this is my y column, and so I'm going to say y is here, and um, I can just peek at that. Um, what I want to do is I want to look at uh, basically the squared re residuals of this column relative to the mean. And, and so what does that mean? So I can take this and I can subtract off the mean of this. And then if I want to, I can um, square all of that. So this is really a measure of kind of how bad the system is if I add all of these things up. So this is... Um, this is really well the, the like the variance of the system, um, except that I'm summing instead of averaging, right? So this was my original um, kind of total um, error or variance in the system. I might think of it as, except I'm just adding up, so it's kind of a sum of squares. And then what I want to think about is, <coughs> what if instead of um, measuring the distance from each um, each uh, value to the mean, what if I measure the distance to my um, actual prediction, right? So it'll be very similar here, right? I can say, um, you know, what um, what is kind of left over if I subtract off my predictions? How do I get my predictions? Well, that's this right here. So I'm going to grab this piece, and I'm going to have my predictions here, and then let me take a look at that. So the way I really think about it is that originally this was how much variance I had in the system, and this is how much I have um, after I after I do predictions rather than just subtracting off the mean. And and so what I could do is well I could say um, I could say well how much is remaining, right? So I could say left over divided by the total, and um, why is that? Oh, let me just put that here. I can say that left over divided by the total. And I'm like, okay, well, I left 79% um, uh, of the variance on the table, basically, which means that I took away 20%. And um, <clears throat> and you can see that that's exactly what this is up here, right? So really, this is the, the math that people will really kind of use to evaluate how good a regression is. Typically, um, we can do that more simply with the R2 score. And even more simply, um, that's the default if I just say uh, linear regression dot score. Let me give you an example of another metric people might use. Um, so maybe I want to just get, well, what is the average error? And so in that case, I would go back to this piece. Right, so this is all of the errors. And if I want to get the average, I should probably just think about the absolute error. And then I could take the mean of that. Right, so this would be the average um, absolute error, and, um, and it turns out that that is just, um, rather than me calculating that myself, I could just grab this mean absolute error here. There's lots of different metrics in here, and I think if I hit shift tab, um, oh, maybe it's just regular tab, I can see all the different metrics that, that come here, and most of them I have never used. So I'm going to paste this here, and I see, well, that's kind of strange. Um, it should be the same it should be the same number. Um, why is that not the same number? Because um, I wanted to get the error in my predictions not relative to the mean. And so, I'm sorry, this was the thing that I wanted to, uh, this is the thing I had wanted to grab. Right, so I wanted to say, you know, here are all my errors. Take the absolute value of them, right? Some errors are positive or negative. I just want to have the absolute value. Then I have the average. And why is that um, invalid syntax? That usually probably means I have a, a mismatch in terms of my parentheses. I see. So this one has um, is matched up there. So I don't know why I grabbed that squared. Okay, so I can see that this is all my errors. And then I'm taking the absolute and then I'm taking the average. 
And now thankfully, okay, I want to actually get the same thing that I have down here. And so again, right, this is just a shortcut for um, this kind of more complicated math, but it's another uh, metric. In terms of how these metrics work, um, uh, this one is kind of um, counting all errors more equally. Um, you know, an uh, error that's twice as big is just twice as bad. Because this one up here, where I'm doing the, um, when I'm doing, where is it? Right here, when I'm doing the R, R squared score, because that one is squaring my errors, um, this will tend to um, make it look worse if I have um, a few errors that are really big as opposed to many small errors. Okay, so those were a couple of metrics, um, which was one of the things we wanted to answer in the slide. So I'm just gonna head back here. We talked about our, our squared score. We talked about mean absolute squared or error. And um, that's our different ways we can measure our errors. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is if our score is kind of mediocre, like 0 0.2, um, out of um, one, how do I know that that's actually good and it's not just chance? And the answer is that what we'll do is we'll take our original data here and we'll score it with our model, right? We'll train a model of the X's and the Y's and just score it. And so let's say my score is 0 0.8, which is not that good. What I'll do is I'll um, shuffle around the data so I know that there's no relationship between the Y's and the X's, right? So what I'll do is I'll take this Y column and just randomly shuffle it. And the word for that is uh, permutate it. And so I get this um, permutated version of this column, right? You can see that, um, for example, five used to be the first number and, and now, now five is down here, right? So I just kind of randomly shuffle that thing and then I train the model on it, um, trying to look for the relationship between the Y's and the X's. And there should be no relationship, obviously, right? Because I just shuffled everything around, but I can try to train a model and get a score on it. And so if I see that when I'm basically um, training a model on garbage data, if I get a better score than, um, than I did originally, well, that probably means that I didn't have any sort of significant result um, originally, right? So I probably didn't have any sort of meaningful model. And, um, and so that's the rough idea. Uh, in actual implementation, uh, what this function here is going to do for us is it's going to shuffle around the data like this and it's trying to get a score, and then it's trying to shuffle it again, and it's trying to get a score, and it's trying to get something like, you know, 100 or 1,000 different scores based on these shuffled data. And, and then based on that, we can estimate and, and really see this score over here. Is it is it kind of unusually good, or does it feel like this could fit in um, with uh, the garbage data? And based on that, we can, um, we can basically say, well, hey, do I trust this model or not? So I'm gonna head over here, uh, back to the notebook, and um, and so maybe I'm just gonna make some notes in here just so it's clear what we're doing. So this part was about metrics. And then this part is going to be about permutation testing. And so let me, I actually already imported it, which is great. So all these things are kind of related to um, model evaluation and they're under this thing called model selection because what we'll often do is have a few different models and we're trying to have different tools to say, well, what is the model that we think is best that we're gonna recommend to people? So I see that I have this permutation test score <clears throat> and I'm gonna paste this right here. And I can see that I need three things. At a minimum, I have to have my um, model, which is just LR. <clears throat> I have to have my, um, uh, my X values and then finally my Y values. And so the way I'm going to be doing this here is since um, um, since here I have this uh, test DF and uh, and um, for both my X and my Y, I'm just going to grab these, right? So this was my X right here based on the seven day average. I want to predict this right here. And so I'm going to grab this. And um, it turns out that this is going to return a tuple of length three. So I'm just going to run that. That'll take a moment. And the three things in that tuple um, are going to be the score of my module model originally. It will be um, you know, some other scores when I have, um, maybe I'll just call the, the garbage score since I'm permuting the data. I'm not expecting to have any um, pattern. There's gonna be a bunch of those. And, um, and then there's gonna be something called a p-value. And what the p-value is telling me is well, what is the probability um, that um, that 
a score this good would be generated by a system that's generating all these garbage scores, right? And so if this is really small, then I can see, well, this is actually much better than my garbage scores. And so I actually have a significant result. So since these are the three things that it's returning, right, I know that T is a tuple, I can just put that here and it'll automatically unpack those things for me. So I'll, I'll take a look at this and then I get um, a score for my model. And then I can have my garbage scores here. I see there's a whole bunch of them. If I want to, I can put those in a series. And, uh, and then I can get a histogram of those. And I can see that, you know, they're actually around zero or less, right? All of these. Um, and this was around 0 0.09, which is actually um, uh, pretty far over here. So it seems like we're pretty far away from these garbage scores. And therefore, this p-value is going to be pretty small. It seems like whatever process uh, I'm using to get all these garbage scores is not likely to have a score this good. So I will take this as a meaningful um, result. Uh, let me head back here for another idea. So how do we deal with the noise? We saw that when I kept doing it a bunch of times, I was getting different scores. And um, for that, we're going to use something called a cross-validation uh, cross validation score. And the way it'll work is I'm going to split my data instead of just having these train and test. I'm going to split it into four pieces. And then each of those four pieces are going to take turns being the test data. So maybe first I'll train my data on these rows and then I'll test it on this. And then my model will get, let's say, a score of 0 0.2. And uh, then I'll take a different chunk of the data. And each of these are called a fold of the data, by the way. And so I'll train on those first, second, and fourth pieces. So I get a model, and then I evaluate it on that test data set, and let's say this time I get a little bit luckier, and it's 0 0.3. Do it again, 0, 0.1, again, 0 0.2. And then I could take the average of these, and that would be a more stable measurement of um, kind of how well my model does. It's not as, um, it's not kind of as vulnerable um, to uh, what happens to go in the test or training data set, because all the data at some point is in the test data um, or the training data. So I'm going to head over here and, um, and do this, right? So this is called uh, cross-validation. And let me call this thing. So cross-validation score. And what do I have to pass in here? I have to pass in my estimator. And then I have to pass in my x values and then my y values. Right, so let me, let me grab those things. Right, so it's actually, I guess, identical to this right here. So I'm going to grab my model, my x values, and my y values. And, um, and this time I just want to do it on all my data. So can I say data frame and then data frame? And actually really what is kind of the best practice is just to do that in the training data. And, um, and so I'm going to do that. And then I get all of these um, scores back, right? And the reason is that there were five folds by default. So I could say, um, you know, in this picture right there is four. Here I see, well, by default there were five. That's why I got five scores. I can say I want 10 of them, and that'd be fine. I get all these 10 scores back. And, and these kind of look like those numbers we were seeing earlier, like 0 0.27, 0 0.17, another 0 0.27, and 0 0.304. Right, if I head back here, and I just kind of run this thing a few times, those are the kinds of numbers I'm getting out of it as I randomly split my, um, my train and my test. So why is this useful? Well, I can have my scores here. And I can say a couple things. I can say scores.mean. And so I can see, well, on average, um, my uh, R2 score, R squared score is going to be 0 0.21. But I could also get some sense of the variance. And that'll tell me how sensitive I am um, to what data happens to end up in the, the test or training data set. And that probably depends you know, how much I, uh, on how much um, I have some outliers and how much outliers define um, what happens with the, with the scoring. Okay, so this will be the way we'll generally do it. And, and so one last thing, right? When I was um, showing this picture here, right? I kind of said, well, hey, I have all my data and then I just you know, split it up into train and test. Why didn't I use all my data here? And the reason is that, um, is that even though that would have been fine to do in this example, what you're often going to be doing is you're going to be trying to do a few different models. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to do cross-validation on each of the models, and then you'll see, well, what do you, one has the best score on average? And you say, well, that one's the winner. That's the one we're going to use in the future. 
And, um, and so there's this risk when you're doing that. Let's say I evaluate 20 models and pick the best one. The, the best one probably did a little bit better than it should, right? If I do 20 models, some will just by luck do better and some will do worse. And so um, even though that's the right process to pick the best model, um, I shouldn't go brag about this cross-validation score because it wasn't like I was just doing one model as in here. I was doing many models. So what I would do is I'd look at this cross-validation score um, across each of my models, pick the best one, and then finally would I go back and actually do my real test data, um, which is still hanging out here. And then that's what I would report as the um, kind of accuracy of my favorite chosen model.